In this video, we're going to explore metric sets, their use on the dashboard, and building them. So anyone who started building a, a dashboard with Dundas BI will probably have realized that you can expand data from the data connectors. And in the case of relational data, pull out different views or tables and simply start building something. From this table, I can choose, in this case, country. Maybe I want to see revenue by country. I drag that on, and that's what I get in terms of my data. I can revisualize this to any visualization I want, but at the end of the day, you have this thing called a binding panel that you can open up, and it's basically telling you which fields correspond to measures, rows, dimensions, and there's even additional bindings. So for the chart, what determines the horizontal position? What determines the height? How are the tooltips generated? How are color and legend and all those wonderful things that go into that visualization bound to the control? So what I'm actually doing here is I'm building a metric set. You'll notice that this guy that I have open is called metric set 7 because I've already built a bunch of them and happens to be the seventh one that I've created. If you want to see this in real life, you can expand any dashboard that you already have created and you notice there's this thing called auto-generated items. These are the metric sets that you intrinsically built just by dragging and dropping data onto the dashboard. So no matter what you do, everything you build actually comes through an object called a metric set. But why is that useful? Well, sure, it's nice to be able to just take data from your data source directly and create something. But we have this object called a full metric set that you can just drag and drop and have pre-built items. So if you knew something needed to, needed to be configured a certain way, you can just set it up and use it. So let's build a metric set. Just right click, new metric set. And it's very much like what I was doing when I was dragging and dropping elements onto the dashboard designer. We expand our data that we want to see and we just create something meaningful. So in my case, let's show revenue. These are all sales figures that I'm showing here. Instead of just showing dates, let's actually expand this out and show a hierarchy. So revenue by year, which will allow the user to drill down on specific years if they want. And then let's actually add a grouping field to this, so by column. So you notice that we have two product lines, audio and video, running across the top. I might want to add a formula to this or set up some kind of period over period, which I could do. Let's just say always show last year. So now I show I, I have revenue. I have revenue last year for audio. Revenue again, revenue for last year for video. So it gets as complicated as you want it to be. Let's revisualize this, in my case, to a stacked bar chart, and then save it. So just check it in. And now if I actually go back and build a dashboard, you'll see that I can take that metric set we created, in this case just called metric set 1, I forgot to rename it, and we just drag and drop it onto the dashboard. So it's just easy access to pre-built content, and that's the whole idea. If you're working with a lot of people and everyone's designing their own dashboards, you might have some commonly used information that you just want to see on the dashboard, just to bring it in and make it easy. Now, even though I dragged this from my metric set on the right, I can still change it. I can still revisualize this to maybe some other type of chart, or set this up or drill it down, however I want it to be on my dashboard. But it just gives you an easy starting point. Also very useful for less technical users who might not be familiar with your entire database, just to know how to build this. Just already have it there for them. And that's the idea. So metric sets are a convenience on your dashboard. Not mandatory, but up to you to use them. 